Hey, hey, I'm Nick. I'm Vic. And we're Envy Board Gaming. Today we're looking at a two to four player game, Whistle Mountain. It is published by Bezier Games, designed by Scott Caputo and Luke Laurie. Vic's going to tell you how to play, and then we're going to give it hey a review. Hey there, welcome to the table. We are going to have an overview here of how to play Whistle Mountain. So in this game, first off, players are going to start by picking between... Um, Th one, uh, three starting abilities if you're playing with two players. So you're always going to have one more than the player count and the uh, the second player will draft first and then pass to the whoever was pick, uh, picked as the first player. So in this case you're choosing between this Dreadnought ability, Planner, and Lead Engineer. And one thing about this game is there's a lot of symbology uh, throughout that means the same thing. So often you'll encounter tiles, um, cards, different, and the same symbols are really found throughout. Handy guide on the back, a glossary of what those terms mean. And also um, there is also an index of every card and ability out there so and machine so it's really handy you can look at what that might mean uh, but you know this one means you can bump somebody uh, and send them back to your player board uh, with your big ship so you can use your your biggest the dreadnought uh, which I'll explain in a moment but you have different size ships um, this one here whenever you build a large or a small machine you get an upgrade which is over there and this one would let you trade an upgrade for a small machi machine Whenever, sorry, whenever you get an upgrade, you get a small machine. So players would choose those and place them on the right side of their board here. The board actually has cool little insert spaces for people to put these little tiles and the upgrades up the top and your little ships on the side docks. Um, and that's your ability throughout the game. In this game, these upgrade spots, once you fill them, you have six in total that you can place out. Um, you can never replace them or uh, get more than that. So once you've reached six, you can't remove them. Those are yours forever. And if you know me, you know that I like reference cards and this uh, player board actually acts as a reference card describing your main action and what you can do and as well as depict the storage limits that are found throughout the game. So um, this game, you, uh, relies on resources to purchase machines and also to do actions so you can only ever have uh, by the end of your turn four of each one whistles are wild unless you have another ability or a, a machine changes a rule whistles are wild in the game so they count as anything and we'll just go through here what the mission is in this game so you're trying to score victory points in the form of these uh, cute little stars and different denominations as well as the stars that are printed out on um, the machines like this one for instance has 10 uh, and a, an, an extra action that you can do if you were to build uh, sorry if you were to build that action or that machine as well as the victory points that are printed on the right side of the board on this tower here where you're ultimately aiming to get your guys out of these barracks and out of this whirlpool and onto the tower um, by placing them out on these scaffold pieces and promoting them over to the side of the tower. And on this tower, you'll see that there's increments that increase in victory points. And if you're the first meeple um, on that tower, uh, saved on that side of the tower, you're gonna get the award. And then any other meeples that were promoted would join uh, the player there. Uh, whoever built the machine that's promoting the worker would make that choice. Um, but in this game, you're pretty much uh, selecting action spots with one of your uh, three airships. So you've got a little hot air balloon here. Forget the name of this one. <laughs> uh, and the dreadnought. And they take up different, uh, I guess it's a blimp, that makes sense. It looks like a blimp. Um, they take up different areas, you'll notice, and the size of them does matter because you'll be able to place them beside the scaffold, unless you have a different starting ability that lets you do otherwise, but you place them beside the scaffold on the grid, and you would immediately take the um, materials, the resources that are beside adjacent to the ship that you put down. So if you put a little guy like this one here, you would actually get the gold and the steel because you're putting it there. So you're using your airships to go to places. There's dock spaces all along the edges of the board. They give you different things like these machines, which I mentioned give you points, but they also add places for players to put their ships and do an extra ability. 
Um, there's also cards up here. They're, they've got a variety of, of things that they add to the game, little upgrades. So this one would let you uh, draw three cards and keep one. This one would give you two whistles right away. And this one would let you discard cards and get one more than the amount that you discarded back. So um, you would go there, pay the associated cost, with your place your airship there, and you can... Um, take that action. You would go there to get some upgrades, like I mentioned, that would go out on your board. Those are ongoing abilities and they may get you points for doing different things. Uh, and the scaffold pieces, which is the basis of how you place the machines. You can only build these machines on the left side. Uh, first by taking a build action, which I'll get into in a moment. They call it a forge action. Uh, but in order to do that, you need to build a scaffold out to accommodate that spot. And ideally, you'll have one of your workers that you've um, moved or rescued from the whirlpool out on one of these empty scaffold pieces. And what I'll show you is, for instance, if I had this um, double coal small machine, this little guy, I could, on my turn, use the forge action, which allows me to re retrieve all of my airships I've deployed, because that's how you get those guys back from the worker placement uh, phase or aspect of the game. And then I could take a build action, which is this represented by this hammer, which is free. Uh, or in any order, I could pay a gold to move somebody. So ideally, I would pay that gold, move them there first, and then build my machine for free immediately score the five points and you'll see how I've covered up this scaffold. And by the way, we started the game, each player puts out at one piece of scaffold and keeps the other piece, but we just skipped that part. So anyway, because my meeple was right down here, I go, I guess I'd put it right here. I go all the way over here, woohoo. And I take that award right away, which would give me a free small machine. And I will at the end of the game score four uh, victory points for every meeple I have at that level of the tower. Now, obviously, it's better to get to the top of the tower because uh, you're going to score more points there. So you're going to want to try to put your meeples there. If a blue, um, if the blue player, player had had their meeple out, I would also be forced to promote them as well. But they just wouldn't go first because it's my choice. So they would instead just join me there for scoring at the end of the game. Uh, if they had had their meeple out there. Uh, another thing in this game that you are doing is rescuing from the whirlpool. The reason you do, you do that is you lose five victory points at the end of the game for all the meeples that are in the whirlpool. Meeples end up in the whirlpool when you build a machine higher than this danger red marker. The, the, it's a bridge in the background. But once a machine is built, every time an additional machine is built, uh, this water bar uh, is placed out here and you'll see that as it as it goes up it's going to start to drown or send meeples to the whirlpool it will also waterlog machines if it covers up a machine even partially and that means that that machine can no longer um, be operated by airships so the water is going to rise when the water gets to the top or, or all of the meeples here have been removed from the barracks. That is when the game ends and you will count up your points here. The great thing about this game, again, handy reference right on the back of the player board End game scoring. So you're getting right away the points from the tower, losing points for your whirlpool, stranded workers, any victory points you had on your upgrade here. Uh, everyone does score you points, as you'll see there. So you'll want to do that. And then this will give you different points for your items in that were in your storage. So you'll even get points for scaffold and machines that you didn't build. And that is how you play Whistle Mountain. Hey, everyone. Welcome back for the review portion of the video. We looked at Whistle Mountain today. We've played it at two players a mm -hmm. couple times. We played it at four players. Mm -hmm. And uh, we already reviewed Whistle Stop. I can post it. I can, if I remember, I'll post a card up here. That was a little older video. I don't. Sometimes I don't like sharing like really older. <laughs> yeah, ones. I felt that way too when you asked me to put the card on the last video we put up. Yeah. I thought, hmm, I'm not gonna go too far back. Yeah, like our end screens. I don't feel like putting that far back unless it's really applicable. But uh, for this, one, we'll throw a card if I remember. Just because the lighting isn't as good and mm -hmm. so forth. Anyway, um, so this game played at two and four. I really like the graphic design of this game. I think, I mean, I like the starting abilities a lot. Yeah. They cool. do seem, um, 
I feel like some of them are a lot better at four players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have different scalability. Yeah, I, I do find issue. Um, that would be one of one gripe I have right off the bat is the starting abilities, which I really love. They don't. They don't feel like they scale right. Um, I has had a dreadnought at two player. Didn't use it once. And meanwhile, these other ones you can just hammer. You could have used mine because you were going sick on the medium and the yeah. Large I could have used machines. yours. Like you would have been a star. Yeah. So it didn't scale <laughs> right for me. Um, the dreadnought was an ability where I can take my dreadnought, which is the three square one, the the biggest um, airship I have. Bounce people. And yeah, kick them out, take that spot. I didn't have to use it. Um, Never, not even once in a two-player game. And I said at the beginning, I'm like, man, that would have been nice at a four-player game. I took it anyway thinking I might use it. Didn't use it. Yeah, but there's a lot of them at least, you know. There's a, a yep. good chunk of them, and there's some more advanced ones than others. So it is nice. I mean, we haven't gone through all of them, all possible. I haven't seen them all. Right. But, yeah, they ha and they're well described in the back of the book, which if you know me, I love the reference cards. I love having a quick thing at a glance that I could just know what does that do without having to spend forever trying to figure it out. Yeah. And they have consistent symbology in this too. Yeah, and I like the, the graphic design, let's say this lead engineer. I like that. If you play the game, you know that that's a medium machine and you know that's a large machine yeah. just by the, the number of squares, the size of it and so yeah. forth, the color. And it just, it just looks good, that looks good. However, some of these don't look as good. This, the Dreadnought doesn't look as good. It's all grayed out. And I, that might be some kind of choice that people are, I don't know. That one just looks, doesn't look right. It doesn't look as nice. It like, doesn't pop as nice as some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. like some of them are like the way. Like but at least with that one, they show the player board to just tell you it's going back. Yeah, they still had quite a few of those as well. <laughs> they show that one. So they've, they've thought of a lot of symbols to cover a lot of different things. And I agree the graphic design looks really good in this game. Um, I have no complaints about the quality of that. That's awesome. The colors Metallic in Metallic little yeah. resources. The whistles. Yeah, the resources are very nice. The gold. You got gold ones. Yep. They're not metal, but they look like they could be because of how nice and shiny they are. We'll have to get a pick, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Mm -hmm. um, cards. Not that good. Um, okay. Well, here's the back art. Unfortunately, that's very unfortunate. It doesn't fit with this game almost. Yeah, yeah. It looks like a, it's a Stefan Feld game now. We're just looking at the cards. Um, the, okay. I mean, the, you know, it's minimalistic. That's fine. I'm not going to criticize a bunch of stuff. I just lost a gold. And I like getting the cards. I like having them. Mm -hmm. They're nice. They're not overpowered at it by any means. Um, you know, this, this game has a lot of different things. It has worker placement. You're putting out the airships and doing stuff. You're even putting out meeples on scaffold to activate different things to promote them and trigger off these little awards. There are some things, and people, I've watched reviews, people say there's like nothing like Whistle Stop. It's not like Whistle Stop. It's not. But there are some things you'll notice similar. These, these upgrades are very similar, and they're even similar shape, these, group, these things that you, yeah. and even the boards, you stick them like, even in Whistle Stop, you stick them right there. There you go. And just like Whistle Stop, that's how that was. It was just like that. Also, in Whistle Stop, you're building out the train routes. This, you're building out scaffolding routes. You're not really traveling down it, but you're kind of building out a board, mm -hmm. just like in Whistle Stop. Um, you're activating these awards, these one-time awards. In Whistle Stop, when you finish a route, you get to activate one time um, one of those spots, and you get to get the resources. Yeah. There are some similarities I noticed as I was playing it. You could tell Scott Caputo had some you know, ideas that he wanted to carry over. Um, the game itself is a good one. Um, I like it quite a bit. At first, I was a little low on it just to get the first opening turns because the problem I have with it um, also is when you're building out things, people can just activate them right, after, right when it's their turn. Like, I just built all that essentially to give you a bunch of stuff. So then you're kind of hesitant about building nice stuff because people just take it. That kept happening with you. Like, in the last game, I was building a lot of scaffold out, and then you were, boom, right there. Or uh, the game before, uh, our friend, every time after he would do something, I would put my airship out and now he has to wait till I withdraw all my airships. Uh, unless he's got some other way to bump me, which... Yeah. And for as awesome as this game is, that actually is the worst part of the game, I think, is building out something that looks so juicy, but you're building out for nothing, really. <laughs> you're just giving other people to take it, they can build over it, and like, oh, man. So that really hurts. Um, that, that It doesn't feel good when you're playing it and that people are just taking the awesome things that you built because it's a shared board. Um, and you don't have a, a turn to do that. You, you, if you build, you cannot go ahead and place one of your um, one of your airships out there to activate mm -hmm. it. You can't. You have to wait. Unless you have an ability, which uh, maybe if doesn't there's ability. happen. There is. You had one. 
That was like to activate the building right after you build it. Oh, you're talking about a machine. Oh, a machine, yeah. Me. Yeah, I'm talking you're about talking, just Oh, the restored. scaffold area, yeah. Yeah, just anything. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so that, that did hurt it a little bit for me. Um, everything else, really good. I, I liked all the actions here. I liked building all the machines. Um, One thing I'll say, though, about that, though, about mm -hmm. placing, is uh -huh. that at least with the airships, you can put them around in different configurations to try to, like, it's not if the it's, same. It's not your spot. But there is places you can go, like at least you could still activate the machine by putting your, your airship out. I don't know. I'm just... If everything's open and it all lands on your turn and it's some of the spots still open, you can get a lesser spot, sure. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's still... That's a negative <laughs> to me. That's a lesser spot, essentially. But Okay. But yeah, you there'll still be a spot for your airship, yeah. Somewhere, maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... All right. Overall, that I mean, that sounds harsh, cause but I did really like the game. I think it's I'm gonna give it a great score. I'm gonna give it a better score than Whistle Stop, and I'm gonna give it an eight six, mm. eight six strong score uh, at a two player game. I find it was still good. I give it an eight eight four eight five. I give it eight five. I think um, when I was playing a two player, and then I gave it eight seven when I was playing a four player. Mm -hmm. Um, and it stuck with that when I play, came back. I played it in two players. So I want to see if it bounced. No, it's. I would say it's a better uh, three to four player game. Yeah. I haven't played a three, but I'm thinking it would be really good at three. Uh, two player, it's it's still good. I give it eight five. So I average it out eight six. Yeah, I agree with that. Everything Nick said about this. Um, I love the quality of the components in the game. We talked about the art a lot, so I won't get into that. Um, but I just, I love this little flooding uh, thing that goes on with this tile. That as it comes out, it, it drowns people. I mean, I just think it's so cute that it, they stacked it all up. And the way that they built this, uh, the, mm -hmm. the board together. It's very, it feels really nice. It, it looks nice on a table. People are kind of impressed. Very colorful and fun looking. Um, and it wasn't too hard to teach. Uh, if you watch our channel enough, you know that Nick often does a lot of the overviews. And when we have game nights, Nick is often the one in our gaming group that will um, explain games. And, and this, this one I picked up very quickly. And I was able to teach it. And so I was glad to do that because um, I don't often venture into that too often. So anyways, that's a side note. It was pretty quick, pretty easy to learn, I think. Everything is depicted really nicely. As I said, and I just had a lot of fun playing this. I agree with Nick with the player count. Um, it was nice to not be, I mean, with, with one person, the, the person before me, I was quite often doing things based on what they were just accomplishing, but it does spread out the kind of the way that you're impacting each other or interacting. So my score for this game is an 8.7. Uh, very close to Nick on this one, felt the same vibes. Um, just enjoyed the game. Uh, like all of these large machines, uh, all the machines, not just the large ones, but the large ones, these rule changes kind of interesting, make you think, really changes up the game and, and adds to the replayability aspect of it. The fact that these awards change, I mean, not that you really necessarily care so much, I mean, about what awards you're getting on the tower, but they're different. I mean, because I often, I just want to try to get my guy over there and get an award. I'm often not, sometimes it's a good one, but I'm not trying to focus on what award it is. Just get me an award. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was kind of the opposite on changing the rules. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I felt like I, I don't want, I wanted to keep playing the same game. I didn't want to change the rules. It's just more, another rule than remember, oh, I can't do that anymore. Um, okay. I'm not there yet. As far as the rule changing, unless it's really opportunistic for me, like, oh, that rule change would be excellent for me. But otherwise, I have to say, okay, what does this mean? Look it up. Do I want to play that? Not really. I like the game as it is. <laughs> so. Yeah. But what is nice, too, is when the water floods it, and then that thing isn't active anymore. So it's kind of just like this temporary blip. Maybe. I don't know. It's kind of an Lots interesting, of and it may not come out. Maybe you might not have one, but some of those, I think most of the large ones have that effect. But anyway, really love the game. Highly recommend it. Thank you so much for watching our review. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more great content. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.